Hey, this is Sam from Overground Sound. Earlier, Rose had a chat with Pat, one of the owners of the Join Us, as part of our Join Us series. Um, so they had a pretty big chat and uh, recorded it, so enjoy. Hello, this is Rose, and uh, I'm here at the Join Us with Pat from the Join Us, and um, we're really pleased to be speaking to Pat today because um, Pat's a pretty important person in the Southampton music scene, and You've also seen quite a lot of stuff, haven't you, Pat? I've seen lots of stuff, yes. So do you want to say what your role is at the Joiners and what you do? Um, I started off uh, nearly 14 years ago um, as a part-time doorman. I worked here on Fridays and Saturdays when the Joiners wasn't the nicest place in the world. And over the years I've gone through going up to a full-time doorman, onto a bar manager, and eventually ended up owning the place, or part owning the place. And uh, my role now is, uh, my official role is an operations director, but really I'm just Pat the doorman. Um, that's what everybody knows me as, that's what I am. I'm sat on the door five nights a week, and that's my job. Yeah, you're quite modest though, aren't you, Pat? Because you're sort of like, your name's slightly legendary, amongst <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's just a strange, it's a really weird thing. Um, I, I never wanted it to be like that. And um, the amount of people that I've met through the years, fantastic people, the best people in Southampton come through the door yeah. and join us. And uh, it's not like having a job. I sit down there five nights a week, I chat to people 90% of the time when I'm sat there supposed to be working, get to know bands, listen to yeah. music. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's the, the people that you meet over the years and they never forget you and you don't forget them. You know, it's, it's the whole scene in Southampton is fantastic. It is actually, yeah. yeah, we think that as well. Mm. So who have you had coming in through the doors that you can sort of like remember? So many. How do you choose? So, so many. Um, okay, again, my, my whole thing about the joiners is, is, is um, local, the local bands. Come so, in, hi. We're, we, um, we're very lucky we've just had our coffees delivered. <laughs> Thank you for the Thank man. you. Mm. That's really kind. You've got to say hello. Hi. So that's the two white coffees with sugar, I think, isn't it? True. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I don't think it's white enough, but it's more, more uh, milk in the fridge. You know? That's really Thank great. You. Thank you so much. Nice. All right. <laughs> Cheers, bud. <laughs> so we were talking about the people coming in through the door of the yeah. joiners. Perhaps we should describe the joiners. It's, um, <laughs> it's, uh, how do we describe the joiners? I've heard it described so many ways over the years. It's had but a first of all, let's just say it won an award, didn't it? It didn't actually. It was nominated. Okay. It was nominated for the best, um, the best music venue in the south, um, and a band from Tunbridge Wells won it. Well, not quite the south. Uh, sorry, a, a venue from Tunbridge Wells actually won it. Yeah. Isn't quite the south, but we're not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> but you were nominated. Which we were was nominated. Amazing. Yeah, there was five but... venues nominated. And we were one of those. Which yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It's fantastic for for Southampton to have a venue like this. Definitely. Um, and yeah, we didn't win, but you know, we're, we're, we win every night as far as I'm concerned. We've, yeah. got, we've got local bands coming through the doors and live music every night. And that's, that's a winner as far as. It is, yeah. 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 But saying so, what you were saying about um, who's come through the doors, to, to me the most important people are the local bands. You know, we look after the local bands mm -hmm. first, and we try to. Um, you know, we've, everybody makes mistakes, and over the years we've made quite a few, and there's got quite a few local bands that would probably say the same, but... I think most bands who come through get a great experience, mm. and um, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's all done for the local bands as far as I'm concerned. The, the, big, the big bands are fantastic, and everybody remembers the big bands. Mm. But without the local scene, you don't have anything. There is no venue without mm. the local scene, and when the lo when the local scene's doing really well, the joiners does really well, yeah. and it's just picking up at the moment. You can feel you can feel yeah. something in Southampton at the moment where bands like Band of Skulls have just you know, yeah. just gone through the roof. Um, and well, delays, yeah. Yeah, and again, who are on the verge um, of, of huge things again. Um, there's a scene happening again, and there's lots of little bands coming yeah. through, and there's lots of artists, um, solo artists coming through, yeah. that have got a massive chance of making it. Um, and the, the only thing that goes against them is they're from Southampton. We're not hip. Um, oh, I don't know, it's becoming hit. Well, we've been saying that for 10 years. You know, 10 years ago, we probably had one of the best scenes in the, in the country. Uh, we had some of the best bands. Um, we had some great, great gigs here. 
Um, but because bands are from Southampton, the record labels just take a different look on them. Bands from Manchester, you can be rubbish. If you're from Manchester, you've got half a chance. <laughs> if you're from Leeds, if you're from London, Brighton. But because you're from Southampton, there's this little bit of a stigma about it. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't get it. I, I, don't, um, I don't get that at all. In fact, I hadn't really sort of like come across that. Because the thing is, I'm confused by that. Because Winchester, on the other hand... Mm -hmm. It's like you've got Frank Turner, haven't you? You've got Who? Chris, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Chris T. T. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I mean, loads. And there's the Lost Souls Club. Do you know them? No, I don't know. Oh, them. they're so good. Again, they're great. Band. Yeah. Frank, Frank's one, obviously, who's, yes. who has gone huge. Um, but even Wembley like, next year. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, no. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yes, Absolutely fantastic. It is. Yeah. Frank's last ever gig was his original band, Million Dead. Yeah. It was far as I could say, it was one of the worst bands I've ever heard. <laughs> Horrible, screamy metal. It wasn't my thing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and he had his last gig here, and afterwards, you know, talking to him, and I'm going to go solo. I'm thinking, oh, no, not screaming <laughs> solo. How does that work? And somebody said, no, he's in spoke. Really? <laughs> and his first ever solo gig here was oh, phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. He's, a, he's just amazing. What was it? What was that? It was, that? Wow, that must be so interesting. So you saw him in a screamo band. His last ever gig. You you know, the last ever gig with Million Dead was at the There's a little bit of graffiti still downstairs oh, in, really? in the old band room that Frank's written something about. If you're reading this, you were at Million Dead's last ever gig. <laughs> um, and yeah, we watched him there and like I said... I'm not a big screamo fan, yeah. as most of the people in Southampton know. Um, so yeah, didn't do anything for me. But then Frank, as a as a folk artist, is just fantastic. Yeah, he is. Yeah, possibly the best thing to come out of the south yeah. of England for yeah. a long, long time. And uh, good luck to him. Yeah, no, we feel the same way. Maybe he'll come back one day, Frank, <laughs> if you're listening. I think that's a hint. <laughs> he he is, and and I mean the thing is that we were really impressed by him as well when we interviewed him and also live we've seen him loads of yeah, times yeah. as well because he's so um, he's so honest he's isn't he? to us yeah. Yeah. he'll never change either. no 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 yeah. that's right you know that yeah. don't you yeah. you trust him yeah yeah you do yeah. very much yeah. and then he manages to get it out I don't, doesn't yeah. he I, like I said, how does he do that his, so his style of music what he's doing now is what I listen to at home and yeah, uh, yeah he, he's on He's quite on, on my stereo quite a lot at home. Did you, have you ever seen him at a big festival? No, I know. No, I don't know. Oh, right. well, we saw him at Reading this year, so you would have loved this, because he's then made the transformation from that screamo band to a single artist for the first gig that you saw, right. to Reading on the main incredible. festival. Yeah, absolutely And he had, incredible. like, everyone yeah. was just absolutely mm. waiting mm. on him, mm. and he made everyone sit down mm. and then spring up again. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. So how many do you think get in front of the main arena in front of Reading? I don't know. Thousands. Tens of thousands. Yeah, thousands surely. Of I don't thousands. know. Everyone sat down. Superb. Yeah. I bet he loved that. He's just <laughs> yeah. he's at home and it's yeah, yeah. yeah. So who else have you seen that's really interesting? It's great, <sighs> isn't it? Um, Who's the most epic band do you think that you've had to Oh by not even close. There's nothing comes close to Coldplay. Absolutely oh nothing God. comes close to Really? Play. When was that? They played it twice. They um, actually supported a band called Terrace, which I think was 1999. I've not heard of Terrace. Nobody has. Oh. <laughs> they, uh, they, were the next, they were enemy darlings, and they were the next big thing. in oh, Terrace were? Terrace were. Oh, right, yeah. okay. And okay. Um, they were the most arrogant, obnoxious band I've had through the doors here. I can't think of another one who was more obnoxious. And they really thought, they, they just believed all the hype that Enemy gave them. And uh, little old Coldplay supported them on the first first time I played it, about 80 or 90 people in. And um, there was nothing, nothing really, no, to know, support bands on a big show, you don't really know, especially if you're working on the tour, I don't really see so, so much of them. No. Um, but uh, the next time they played it, they headlined in 2000, which was about six six months later. It was just before Parachutes came out. Oh, yeah. And... Um, I worked at the back, and my job was to, to open the, the, the support band, had to unload all their gear before Coldplay came on. So I had to stand by the fire door, which I didn't like, I wasn't happy. Um, and when they unloaded, stay by the fire door, as you were there anyway. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not very happy because I've got to stand out of the back all night in the heat. And <laughs> I'd much rather be stood on the front door chatting to people. <laughs> but then Chris Martin appears on stage, and uh, it's. it's, it's Draw dropping. It was just it was the one gig where 
where I stood there literally thinking, I'm watching the biggest band in the world. This band will be the biggest band in the world. Really? Yeah. Uh, to the extent where I went home uh, and emailed loads of my friends yeah. just saying Coldplay. The only time I've ever done it. I've never done yeah. it ever yeah. any other time. Coldplay. Listen to Coldplay, they're going to be massive. And whether you like them or not, I know there's a, there's a big um, love-hate thing with Coldplay. A bit. Especially at the moment. Yeah. But um, they are amazing. They're absolutely incredible. And the way, the way they've gone forward, and, and I saw them a few few weeks ago up at the Roundhouse in London. Yeah. And it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. And Chris Martin going on on stage. It was an iTunes festival. It was an unpaid thing. And he was going on on stage about how it's gone full circle from when 10 years ago they played the Barfly. And uh, they, yeah. didn't get, they didn't get paid that night either. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, he didn't get paid for this night, and it was the yeah, and the show was amazing. And again, you know, he said to me, "We chatted afterwards," and he said, uh, "I said I love this venue." I said, "Yeah, it's great." So again, I was just a doorman at the time. Nothing, yeah. else, no real, uh, no no real feelings for the building at all. And uh, he said, "Oh, great, yeah." And he said, "I'm going to come back and buy it one day." I'm still waiting, Chris. If you're listening <laughs> to this, another little yeah, message. Another, yeah, another message. <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting. Um, there's plenty of jobs I need doing. If you've got any spare time on your hands. But what was it then? Um, it's really amazing how you can tell, isn't it? Yeah. You can, you what can't... was it about him? Because, like, how long ago was this? This was 2000, so it would have been 12 years ago. Wow. Um, and, uh, yeah, there is something. There is something about bands. Bands like the editors who came yeah. and played here. They're a great band. Oh, yeah. uh, and you get watching them. <clears throat> it's like watching something really refreshing yeah. and new. And another band you could tell straight away. Franz Ferdinand. Yeah. Another band who you just knew. It's, it's almost as soon as you meet them, when they come through the door, they're I just an edge. That. Yeah. Right. I really agree with mm. that. There is, because that's because what I'm finding, and the others that you know, the rest of us, because a lot of us do interviews or because we're, we're filming it and stuff. There's always loads of people there. Mm -hmm. That I notice it in particular because I'm always really concentrating on the artist. Mm -hmm. But I can kind of tell now what they're going to be like mm. live, even if I've never seen them live. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah, I know exactly what you mean Power. when you say that. Yeah, there is yeah. there is something about bands for there sure. There is, um, and it's a confidence thing as well. I think with a lot of bands, you get yeah. a lot of you get a lot of young bands who come through, and you can see how frail they are waiting yes. to be up on the joining stage. Um, and then you see other bands who just walk in and look, and they come and have a coffee and go down two minute sound check, and you can hear in the sound check how yeah. good they are, and when they get up on stage, they blow the place away. Yeah. But there is definitely something there. There's definitely something in the, in the, in the, in the feeling with the band. Um, I agree with that. Mm. It's really nice that we both think that, actually. Because mm. it's impossible to... You can't capture it or bottle it, can you? Not at all. No, it's not just... As, no. I, I, don't, yeah, I can't... You know, the, you, you might meet a hundred kids in a night who look alike, but yeah. the odd one will stick out for, for a reason. Yes. Um, and, yeah, we've had quite a few of those sort of characters come through the yeah. doors over the years. I had a similar feeling, you know that feeling that you had about Coldplay? Mm. I'd, about the Lost Souls Club that I really want you to see. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I think they've gigged here. I'm actually, sure but they maybe they, idea, yeah. I think they came here just after they'd done been to Vietnam or somewhere. Right. But they started doing acoustic sessions. And I don't know, did you go to Pulse? No. No, it's like, it's like a one day yeah, festival. Yeah, know, it's yeah. like a charitable thing. And we went there, Subgiant were there. They're a good band yeah, as right, well, right. yeah. Mm. And, um, and Lost, it was Lost Souls Play did their first ever acoustic session. And it was like that. It was like bloody, wow. bloody, mm. um, gobsmacking, mm. the hairs going up the back of your neck. <laughs> and, and I just thought the same thing. It's a fantastic and enough, feeling. I thought, they're the next Coldplay. Ah, right, okay. So, mm. yeah, mm. yeah, there was just something about their commitment to their yeah, sound. Yeah. Mm be interesting to see what happens. It will be, yeah. Mm. yeah especially for a local band as well, like mm. you said. It's, we're always, again, that's the main, it's, it's my whole thing about the joiners, uh, I'm not saying it for other people, but um, it's the local bands doing well and watching yeah. them staff. Somebody said to me last night, yeah, he came in, he said, um, I can't believe how, how, um, how much um, things have changed, she said, since I first started coming here. And I said, what do you mean change? She said, well... He said, just the, he said, the feel and the atmosphere in the venue. I said, how long have you been coming here? Yeah. He said, since I was 14. And I said, how old are you now? He said, 22. Oh. And I feel like I've watched him grow up. <laughs> yes. You know, he's been in bands ever since he was 14. Yeah. He's in a band now, Drew his name, is in a band called Octane UK. Yeah. They played last night. And um, 
it's a smashing lad. He's a really nice lad. Mum and dad always come to gigs. That's great. And it is, it's like, yeah, yeah you, sort of, you almost feel like one of their parents. Yeah. But, but, but I watch kids grow from being uh, like 12 year olds, literally started off in bands at 12, and uh, now they're like 25. Yeah. And I've watched them grow up, and uh, yeah, just, they feel like part of the family. Yeah. Um, one of the mums said to me a few weeks ago, you really do feel like part of the family. All he ever talks about is you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's so nice. <laughs> it's just weird. I think you're quite a good role model. Um, yeah. Well, you're always working. I'm here a lot. So that means you're working. Yeah, well, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, like I said, it's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard to describe it as a job because it's. I am. I've just got to come socialising most of the time. And. Um, but you're getting so much information, aren't you? Because oh, you get, yeah, all everyone the time. comes through the doors, yeah. don't they? So yeah. you see what people are like, yeah. and then you see all the bands backstage, yeah. don't you? You're yeah. dealing with all the bits that reveal stuff. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you hear all the gossip, and you get yeah. in. You know, hear what bands are changing, and who's leaving who, and who wants a gig, and who's looking for you know various things. Yeah. But yeah. We were mentioning um, local bands earlier. Yeah. Are there any other? I mean, we were, when we came in, we were saying, I said, I was saying that fun memories I've got of being in this room because this is where we interviewed Barry Tomorrow and pulled apart by horses. Yeah. And when I mentioned Barry Tomorrow, we both went neat weak, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I just love Barry Tomorrow. They're not, again, it's not as, they're I should, brilliant. I should, and I, should, I should hate them. Because um, they're because of the genre of music. Yeah. yeah, and it's just not my thing at all. But because, again, we've watched them growing up, all of them. You know, David, um, the guitarist, started coming here when he was 12, 13. And uh, him and his brother, yeah, um, and all the other lads have all been coming at the same sort of time. Yeah. And very tomorrow seem to have been together for about ten years. I don't I think know. they have, but it feels like ten years. They've been together a while though, haven't they? they it's have. got to be part of the secret of their phenomenal sound. Oh, definitely, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, again, the way you know, I, just, I really want them to make it. You know, they've got so much of a chance. I they've, think they will. They're right on the edge of it now. Definitely, yeah. Because, um, I, oh yeah, we definitely think they're going to make it. And we've noticed that. I don't know. I don't know if you've noticed on Facebook at all, but their their so like their pick up on Facebook is massive. Uh, so and that's they're very good at marketing themselves. They're really yeah. really good at that, and they're really good with their fans. They're so committed they to are, their fans. Yeah, they are. They're so committed. Yeah. But the thing that I remember about Very Tomorrow was here at the Joiners because um, I hadn't really heard much about them. You know, I'd heard a bit. Um, did we interview them that night? I can't actually remember if we interviewed them the same night that I saw them first, but this is what I remember, and this will strike a chord with you. I remember that it was obviously it's, there was like a, quite a heavy mosh pit going because they're all into that and stuff, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And they were standing up on stage, well, not standing, they were doing their thing, which is like really energetic, mm -hmm. and the lights were going on and off. And then I think it was David and Danny mm -hmm. were standing at the front of the stage, and they had their arms outstretched like that, right? And they were bouncing to the beat. Right. And then Mehdi, because Mehdi's quite energetic yeah, as well, he is. isn't yeah, he? Yeah. He's quite energetic on stage. He also was sort of like moving in, in a way that worked with it. And then obviously you've got the phenomenal drums and the fantastic voice coming yeah, over. Yeah. And I was standing at the back and all I could see was this silhouette on stage, powerful bouncing, mm -hmm. completely in unison, mm -hmm. This absolutely incredible combination of Screamo and Justin's fantastic yeah, voice. Yeah. And it was absolutely mesmerising. Yeah, yeah. And so I think, I think they're going to be massive because everyone's getting that experience <coughs> and goes to Bury Tomorrow gig, aren't they? Definitely, yeah. You, uh, you does, can't it, not be it, affected by it. It doesn't matter if they're playing in front of 30 people or 3,000 people, they give the same show. They do. And it's full of energy. Yeah. So if they played last Monday for here for Halloween. And... Um, Unfortunately, I wasn't here. I was in London watching Noel Gallagher with my daughter. But oh, yeah. Mm. I would have. Uh, I almost cancelled because they confirmed on the day yeah. that they had issues at another venue, and um, they decided to bring it to the joiners at yeah. the very last minute. And uh, yeah, I came very close to cancelling Noel Gallagher to come oh, and watch Buried tomorrow. Mm. It's <laughs> interesting what you say about about joiners taking up bands from other venues because we're interviewing a band, um, Turbo Wolf, and yeah, I think and I think that's here because they were due to gig at. Um, uh, somewhere in Bournemouth, okay. and that venue's got problems, so they're coming here. Oh, uh, right, okay. Yeah, again, that happens a lot, you know, if, yeah, if, if venues, yeah. Because you always, you always welcome people, don't uh, you? Uh, Notice well, that. 
I'd like to think what people think that yeah, way. Yeah, I've noticed we, that. We try, I, I personally try really hard on the door every night of, of being here, making sure people feel welcome. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's always time to make a little bit of conversation with someone or a smile when they come through the door. Um, or just not to have attitude. You know, so many yeah, venues yeah. you go to, yeah. you walk in, yeah, name, oh, yeah. how many tickets, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I> <laughs> bye. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's, what, that's, <laughs> that's all you get. Pussy. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Did, did I mean to come yeah, here? Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm, I'm sure people must feel like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I'd, I'd much rather people felt really welcome mm. when they came in. We've always felt welcome here. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah it's really it's, nice. It's something I've, I you know, personally do work quite hard at. And, uh, yeah, to get the rewards of people saying it. And the amount of people when you go up to town, you know, you're walking through town on a Saturday and people, hello, Patty. Yeah. I've got no idea who you are. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you probably recognise Eventually, yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah, you think, oh, yeah, I know who that is. Yeah. yeah. But it happens so much. And it's, uh, again, I've asked all down to trying to, you know, trying to be friendly, trying to be nice to people. Yeah, it's important, it's, isn't it? It's massively important. Because I mm. think that that's really important in the bands as well. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. yeah. If a band is friendly and, and, and good with their fans, yeah. a good example, Ed Sheeran. Yeah. It's unbelievable what Ed did when he, he played here probably six months ago. Yeah. And um, end of the night, he's rushed from. He wasn't actually on the stage. He was in the middle of the crowd. Yeah. Um, stood on a stool playing yeah. his last song, which was which was amazing in itself. But he rushed to the front door, so he could talk to every single person yeah. that had been to the show. Yeah. Hour and a half. It took him. Um, but he literally spoke to every single person. Oh, that, very that, good. Yeah, and great, great bit of marketing. You know, whoever said, uh, you know, I think it's probably him himself. Yeah. But probably. you know, people remember that and. Uh, you also, you always remember the bands above the idiots, shall we say? I know. <coughs> um, there's lots of bands that are just so ignorant and up themselves. They just haven't got a clue. No idea. But absolutely not, because mm. I think that, and that's something else that we really notice as well. We notice, notice it a bloody mile off, can't mm. you? Mm. <clears throat> and I think that you sort of like you need to consider uh, if you're a band and you're starting out, even if you're as brilliant as Coldplay mm -hmm. were, there's always a point at which. Every single one fan yep. is the one fan of the moment. Exactly. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah. And that's how we feel about mm. things, really. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's... It's a kind of humility, isn't it? it oh, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I think a lot, a, lot, a lot of bands, we put them to, especially at this level, you know, they've got to remember, that's just starting off. And um, it's the bands that come back down, come back down with a bump. Mm. It's, the, it's the bands when people come back the second time. Well, there might have been 200 here the first time. Yeah. But there's only 50 the second time. Yeah. Because they're on the way back down. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, shall I mention names? Can I mention uh, one no, name? No, we don't mention negative not, things. No, 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 well, it's not really negative. It's not yeah. really a negative thing, but it is, it's terrace again. It's going back to terrace. Oh, right, that's so, okay, because they're quite... Yeah, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they, um, like I said, they Coldplay supported terrace. Yeah. The first time they played here. And um, terrace headlined again about six months later, and all of a sudden the enemy didn't like them. Yeah. But the arrogance was still there. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, there was an incident throughout the night where they, they parked their van in the alleyway and um, the fire brigade had asked us to move it. Yeah. So I'd gone up to the sound engineer and I was politely told to off. Oh. Really? So uh, I didn't take too kindly to this, being the doorman at the time. But also, but, I mean, the problem is that when it's, it's a fire, it's a fire issue, hazard. there's it's absolutely exactly. nothing you've None, got nothing to do what, what you've been told. Double yellow lines in an alleyway. Yeah, yeah, no. So, uh, a venue uh, with people in it, you've got to do it, haven't well, yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, he, uh, yeah, we end up having many words. He's coming outside the venue, um, but the whole the thing, uh, he, yeah, eventually he moved the van. Um, but the, the thing I remember throughout the night I kept remembering was every time they started a new song, somebody in the crowd would shout, Coldplay! <coughs> oh, really? Coldplay! <laughs> really? Because Coldplay That's supported so them the time, yeah. <laughs> And the, and the guitarist who was so arrogant got uh, madder and madder uh, and madder. But he still didn't want to talk to anybody afterwards. He was still exactly the same as he was before. And that's why Coldplay are where they are now and Terrace are where they are now. That's, do you know something? It's reminded me of an incident recently. When we were at Reading Festival, because we had like five people covering Reading this year, mm. so all five of us went over and we covered and did loads of stuff. It's really useful for checking out bands and stuff. And there was this one band on the, I don't know, it's a tiny introducing stage or something, right? And if you're on the introducing stage, basically... You're starting off. And also, A, you're really lucky to be yeah, exactly. there. Yeah, yeah. And B, God, you know, act grateful. Mm. And there was one band that was on stage, and they were having a go at the audience. Mm. 
right? And I just like joined this. Do you this know who they were? I can't remember their name. I know it's just as well, really. <laughs> and 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 I turned around to these guys next to me and I said, I said, is that really right? Did I really hear correctly that he told the he told a member of the audience to shut up or something? Right. I stopped. Mm. And I just thought, how did that? What a waste of slot! Yeah. I was actually quite pissed off because I thought, like you, all the bands yeah. that like could have could have put on it. that side yeah, and right. would have absolutely rocked it yeah. and made the most of that yeah, experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's someone out there telling the audience to shut up. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go up and have a little chat with him. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. So I was going off to see a guitarist about mm-hmm. something. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that's the, oh, that's the bad that's side. That's terrible, of the isn't it? it is, yeah, and it, again, luckily that hasn't been again. I think people, bands have realised over the years that it's no point being like that. And most bands are really humble now when they play I here. agree. And they come in and they're yeah. really friendly and they're yeah. really nice. But it's not one still who comes through the doors yeah. and bands who play for 15 minutes who and won't have any lights on stage no. and, just, and turn their back to the audience. We had a band oh, quite that's, recently. Oh, that's so not going to work. Well, I think they were very disappointed with the crowd. Um, Again, I won't mention their name. No, don't. But yeah. they, they played for 15 minutes with their backs to the crowd with no lights on. That's so rude. It was very strange. <laughs> That's so rude. Mm. They do have responsibility. They do very much so. Yeah, they, yeah, do. they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most people expect half an hour for their money. Uh, anything under half an hour. But also face forward. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, face forward. <laughs> Yeah, it's the odd thing over the years, yeah. you know, where you get a band member who looks the other way or something because it's quite cool, but the whole band do it, <laughs> including the drummer, who's Did back, he? facing the wall. <laughs> it was bizarre. It was That's really, really bizarre, bizarre isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So who's like, we'll come back and have another chat because it's so interesting chatting with you, Pat. So yeah, no, no, don't, that definitely. But before we go, um, let's, do you want to mention a few local names? Oh, so many. Um, yeah, see if you can mention a few. Delays obviously top of yeah. the pile for me. Always have been like my my favourite local band for many years. Um, Who else? Everybody knows that. They know that. Barry Tomorrow, you know, yeah. again totally different genre, but again great lads. Brilliant. Um, Mesmerising band. They are. Yeah. We love and, them. Yeah. Genuine. Are oh, very much so. Yeah. yeah. And a few new things that are coming through in Southampton at the moment. Um, there's a lad called Sean McGowan. Yeah, I've heard of him, but I don't know his music. Um, I'd be really surprised if Sean doesn't do something yeah. in the next few years. Yeah, he's, uh, he's he seems to have it all. He's, he's a yeah, complete package. Yeah, I think package. it's the second time I've heard his name, actually, mm. in two weeks. Oh, right, that's yeah, good. Yeah, from yeah. members, yeah, where, he's, where someone, one of our photographers mentioned him oh, the other he's, day. He's only 18, 18, 19, but he's got such a presence on stage. He's, that's what this other guy said. Mm, he's a little bit arrogant, but arrogant in a good way. Yeah. Um, and the lyrics to his songs are incredible for a kid. Yeah. Um, Brock and Shirley. Yeah. Um, wow. Who, yeah, who, who, he should, yeah, there's just something about him. And another lad as well called Tom Biggs. Yeah. Who's playing a fair bit in Southampton at the moment. Oh, I've heard his name he's, too. Yeah, yeah, he's just supported Band of Skulls on a few shows. Mm. And uh, he's got, he, he got tied in with a Mumford and Sons sound. Yeah. But he's getting away from it. Oh, and that's good. People are starting to talk about yeah. other things with him. And I think he's more Tom Waits now. Oh, that's very good. Amazing voice. Yeah. So there's a couple of people to look out for. Yeah. Um, but uh, Southampton's just full of great yeah. bands. Oh, did you see that acoustic session we did with with um, Kate McDonald? Have you seen that? Oh God, you won't have heard of her. No, no, no. She's fifteen. Uh, right, she's fifteen. That's ridiculous. Yes, it is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but and and I've sort of like seen her. All my twice. children are older than fifteen. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've seen her twice. But the thing was that she. <clears throat> she's just she has got something like, and she's so young it's up to her what she does with it isn't yeah, it yeah def- definitely yeah. so we'll see yeah. it's amazing that you can see talent in yeah. someone so young mm. oh, we, so, had, we had a girl play here I don't know if you've heard of you had a birdie yeah, yeah, yeah right. because okay, I'm judging right. the life and unsigned and birdie's one of the previous winners oh really she? I yeah, know yeah. That. Yeah, but she's an interesting winner because she's, she's got a lot of her, integrity. Well, she played her first ever gig here. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah, her, her brothers are in a band called um, Modern Fighting Vehicles from Limington. Oh, Great band, really yeah. good band. And about three years ago, she could only have been about 12 or 13. Yeah, because she's young. And um, they turned up one night and they always used to bring a really good crowd with them. But this one particular night, there's loads more. And I'm thinking, this is a yeah, bit strange. Yeah, lots is. of people coming in for yeah. tonight. And I was talking to one of them before, and he said, oh, my sister's going to get up and sing some songs. I said, I'm sure she said this sister, I might be wrong there, but yeah. this girl's going to get up yeah. and sing some songs with us. You know, this little tiny thing got up on stage, and just unbelievable voice. Mm. And everybody was talking about it, and I think there might be some industry in the room yeah. as well. 
never really was talking about her. And uh, you know, like a few weeks ago, somebody said to me, have you heard this birdie? Yeah. I said, no, I haven't. I said, oh, well, listen, she's great. She is. She's fantastic. She is, yeah. But it turns out to be this girl that was on, wow. on the joiner stage a few years ago. Wow. So how long ago was that out of interest? I guess about three years. I it's quite interesting, is it? Because I reckon that for a band, because there's no shortcut, is there? It's hard graft, hard graft, oh, hard graft. Well, so, I know. It's a bloody some, life, isn't it? Band, you know, again, going back to delays, you look at them, they've been grafting for 12 years. Yeah. They have been signed. Yeah. And, um, you know, they have done some great tours. But they should be massive. Yeah. You know, you look at some of the bands that are massive, and uh, you listen to some of the delay, you know, delay stuff's on yeah. telly every day on various things, on yeah. sports programmes and b- background music and all sorts of things. But, um, but yeah, they should be massive and for some we'll reason... We'll have to have a word with them. We'll have to do something with them. I'm sure we can help them as uh, well. It's because they're yeah. from Southampton. No, it's not. It's the Southampton thing. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Okay, Pat, so we'll get together another time. Yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Great. Um, uh, one last mention of one other band as well at the moment is coming through the ranks. Yeah. A band called Netherlands. Ah, oh, not heard of them. Um, all from Southampton originally. Cool. Have all moved to London, um, and they played their first gig here about about a month ago, and they blew me away. Fantastic. Really? Absolutely. Are they then? It's very, really mellow, laid back, stargazing. Oh. Really nice indie. Um, but the, um, there's a girl who, she, she, she plays drums, but it's the most mellow drums you're ever likely yeah. to hear, and the singer, and the two voices go together, right. and it's perfect. Oh. It's absolutely perfect. And um, that's, that's, that's my tip for the top next year. Really? Oh, brilliant. Yeah, I think if they, if they don't do something, there's something seriously wrong with the music business. Mm, yeah. That's a topic for another, <laughs> for another chat. Oh, yeah, that's right. yeah, I think you might have to bring some more batteries for that. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Pat. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.